Very well. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. I am Mr. Disembodied Voice DM at your service, disembodied no more. After two months of fourth displacement, I have returned to the land of reliable internet, and therefore I, <laughs> and my face, welcome you one and all to Lawful Stupid RPG. We are trapped at home, and tonight we are continuing with Session 10 of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Double the digits, double the mayhem. Playing with us today, we have, as usual, Typhon the Wizard, Falkron the Cleric, Rim the Ranger, Persephone the Bard, Jax the Rogue, and Silas the Sad Paladin. Last time, the harried adventurers tirelessly defended Riverstone Manor against an onslaught of imps and powerful Dead Three cultists. Fires. Explosions, traps, and horrors were waiting around every corner. Several of you were knocked unconscious, only to rise again with the aid of your comrades and allies. Sir Gatherin Stag, the half-orc, became poisoned, but still lives. And you saved the lives of Chosric the Seneschal, Thedria Green, the priest of Sylvanus, and Persephone's cousin, Australis Ravengard, all of whom would surely have died without your help. Unfortunately, the holy warrior Pilgrim Lowlighter fell when her while heroically defending the household shrine to Torm. In the final moments of battle, you witnessed Lady Shastra Ravengard, wife of Grand Duke Uldar Ravengard, rise up from her sickbed where she had presumably been at death's door. She viciously attacked the dragonborn Rim and fled downstairs. Attempting to prevent her from escaping the manor, Silas Khan leapt over the balcony using some hanging tapestries to slow his fall. Unfortunately, he misjudged the distance, and he now lies on the floor of the Grand Hall unconscious. But elsewhere, he is fully conscious. Silas, there's a sharp pain in your back, and you clench your eyes against it, but it instantly fades. You open your eyes and find yourself atop a familiar hill. Around you are the scattered pieces that once formed the massive statue of Vandria Gilmaldreth. Now, chunks of alabaster and dust. What do you do? I look around. Is there anyone else there? Is it just myself and pieces of stone? Make a perception check. Seven. Hmm. Around you is desolation. At the bottom of the hill is mist. And all you can see within the scope of your view is gray, formless shadow. However, as you begin to gaze, you hear a voice. Oh, Silas, you really should learn to let broken things go. 
and appearing in your view is Elila. What do you want, Temptress? <laughs> it's not just enough to say I wanted to see you. Were you anyone else, I might consider accepting that. However, recent history has given me reason to doubt your sincerity. Plus, can't you just look in on my soul whenever you feel like it? No. No. Your soul won't belong to me until you die. You're close at the moment, but I think things are going to work out for you, at least for now. I have good news. Mm, do tell. The circumstances of our arrangement were equitable, despite how you may feel, but thanks to your friend's interference, you ended up paying far more for your dwarf's life than you intended. While it's beyond my power to undo what was promised in good faith, I was able to convince my mistress that you deserve far more in exchange for what you've paid. She has granted you her favor. Your... Silas, you will have such power. The price has already been paid. All you need to do is reach out and take what is rightfully yours. What mistress is this you speak of? Glazia. Very powerful Silas. She rules the sixth layer of hell. She would be a formidable patron for you. I have a patron. Yes. Well, unlike your patron, Glazia would never, ever refuse to answer your call. She is capable of fulfilling whims and desires you're not even aware that you have. Trust me. And you serve this ruler of hell. I do. And I'm she one would of her never... champions. You're one of her champions. Is this a new designation that you've won somehow? No. No. I've been her champion for quite some time. Although I've been detained until very recently, thanks to you. If, as you have said with your words, the terms of our deal were unfair, then I bid you release me from the agreement. No, the terms of our deal were quite fair. Circumstances just worked out less than fair, but it was a rightfully drawn contract. You free me, and in return, I help your friend. I helped your friend, mm, but you are unable to free me. So your soul is forfeit. But there's so much you can gain for that. Tell me, Elila, what would it take to break one of these contracts? <laughs> well, it's not within my power which seems to suggest it's not within yours either, at least not in your current state. But and what tell do you me say? more, tell me more, Elila. I think I've told you everything you need to know at the moment. Well, this agreement that makes you a champion, is this freely entered into, or are you a slave? We're not talking about me. We're talking about you, Silas. Your power. Your gifts. I don't have any power and I don't have any gifts. But I'm very intrigued. Do you serve Glacia willingly? <sighs> mm. 
you have a choice to make, Silas. Do you choose what Glazia offers? Not with a goblin's ten-foot pole, Elila. She sits down on the ground, folds her arms, shakes her head. What do you know of the blood war, Silas? Nothing. Should I? Uh, feel free to make a religion check, if you wish. I would generally doubt that I would know that, though. Okay, fair enough. Ten. Uh, the blood war. Her eyes grow distant. She stares off into the mist. It is a battle that has been raging since the dawn of creation. The forces of chaos, demons from the abyss, are constantly trying to fight their way free so that they can destroy the multiverse. They wish nothing less than total annihilation, and they are relentless. The only thing stopping them are the forces of hell. We are the vanguard that protects all of existence. You call us evil, but from my perspective, we are simply the only beings capable of making the choices, the sacrifices that must be made in such a conflict. We tempt mortals to offer their souls, yes, so that our ranks may be replenished. Most end up as grist for the mill of carnage, but the exceptionally strong become heroes, true heroes, that protect more of creation in a single hour than you will ever manage during your, the whole of your mortal lifespan. I did not foresee being able to claim your soul when you died, Silas, but I'm glad that circumstances have worked out that way. We need you. Take the power that Glazia offers you. Wield it. Become strong. Use it however you like and know that when you breathe your last mortal breath, the real work will begin. An eternal life of purpose and glory doing battle against the ultimate foe, Oblivion. What would this patronage grant me? Oh, so much, Silas. So much. I could tell you at all, but I, I prefer you find it out on your own. I remember a tale told in temples of Helm. My mentor, Andrelor, took me there, known as Shalemorn's Folly. In exchange for power, shortcuts, blasphemy to one such as I, though Vandria turns her sight from me now to go down the path of ease, of convenience, to go down the path that is infernal, this would be a mistake. I already made one mistake, thanks to you. But I reiterate, if you do not serve Glacia willingly, I offer to fulfill my portion of our deal. I will free you, should you wish it. Hmm. So noble. We do need you. All of creation needs you, Silas. 
and that power that my mistress offers is there. In the deepest moments you have, the most desperate conflicts, you will feel it and you will use it. You are too good a man to do anything less. And Vandria will never welcome you back into her grace. Look how quickly she cast you out for such a paltry offense. Your heritage marks you as unworthy in her eyes. Vazia will always be there for you. Vandria can forgive the human part of me. Stranger things have happened. Lesser people have been welcomed into Arvindor. It's your words. You can continue to deceive. It's oh, just what you do, isn't it? I wasn't referring to the human side of your heritage. And she fades into the mist. And you are left alone on the top of the hill. I look around to see if I can see if I can find uh, either the face of the statue or uh, some some piece that's recognizable other than just a pebble. You start to like pick pieces up? Yes. So as you touch each piece, it turns to sand in your hand. One after another, just dust. Everything you touch just completely falling to pieces until you find the face. When you touch it, it does not crumble. I brush it off, clean it off the best I can. Is it the complete, the full face or just like one eye? It is most of the face. You see both eyes, the nose, and a little bit of the mouth is cut off on one side, but it is the face piece of the statue. I, I clean it off the best I can and treating it almost as though it's a real face. Cleaning it off with my fingers gently. And Did you pick it up? Yes. It's extremely heavy. Far heavier than it should be for the size that it is. But you cradle it and you clean it and as you're doing, you see the path that had led down the hill in previous visions, the one that led to the sounds of morning, and you could still hear them faintly, but you could also hear, it sounds like a hammer. Bang, bang, bang on metal. Are the sounds coming from the same direction or different directions? Same direction. There's only one path available to you. I'm going to carry the face with me and go down the path. You have to hold it with both of your arms. It's dragging you down. It's difficult to stand erect as you carry it, but you stumble down the path. And as you do, the mist begins to cloud your eyes and you awaken and you're back in the great hall of Riverstone Manor and you see a wounded bearded face of Chazric the Seneschal leaning over you saying, there, there, you'll be all right. Took a bit of a fall, but uh, I think, I think things will be okay. So that brings us to the rest of you all. So at the very end of the last encounter, Silas jumped over the ledge. Typhon, you went to the secret door and encountered Captain Kyberin, who said he had just seen Shasa Ravengard running past him down the steps, and you told him to go after her, and he is. Um, the massive uh, form of the uh, Bay Knight with the spear and the uh, spirit in the uh, sort of spectral armor lies dead. 
All of the imps are dead. Fires have been contained. There's a coppery smell of blood in the air, panting and confusion, relief. Uh, Rim is going to call out to the suit of armor, return to your rest. And uh, he is also going to run after Shasra. All right, so you begin to plow down the steps after Shasra. Typhon, I assume... I'm doing the same. Doing and the same. I think if if there's a, some point where I can see a... As soon as I can see a window, I would like to dismiss my familiar and then resummon it on the outside of the building. Or if there's just a point where I know it's obviously the outside of a building and instruct it to go get a high vantage point, find her, follow her. Okay, so in the bathroom where you are, there is a large window. So that okay. would be your best bet. There's no windows in the secret uh, passage yep. stairwell. So I would just dismiss and then resummon outside All right. the bathroom. Hawk disappears and mm -hmm. appears. It starts to circle around Riverstone Manor. Okay. Um, so that is Typhon, that is Rim, uh, Persephone, Falcron, Jax. I am immediately and Persephone, sorry. Uh, it, we get the sense that in the trying to catch uh, Shasra, she's gone, right? Like, is well, there she's any... No, she's not in view, but, but not enough time have... has passed for her to... I mean, somebody running, you would think, based on the size of the manor, um, not enough time has passed for her to okay. leave the manor. Then I'm going... I'm following her. Like, I'm okay. just going as fast as I can. You're heading down the steps. Very well. Falkrum? I am not the fastest person in this party, and therefore my running skills will be sadly challenged. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, uh, having heard uh, Silas take the leap and then the crunch as he hit, I'm going to be like, that's not good. And so I'm going to like head over to the uh, ledge, look down, and see that Silas is currently being tended to. Uh, and then I'm going to do that thing where I kind of like go, uh, no, no, I'm going to take the stairs. All right. And so then I'm going to go ahead and uh, head back down the steps to uh, get down to Silas. All right. Jax. He'll look over to Silas and say, uh, oh, Silas is dead. Shall we bury him now? Oh, no, he's we're all not, right now. We're not burying Silas. Uh, uh, what should we do? Shall we loot now? <laughs> yes, you can loot. All right, so <laughs> we're told to loot. Losing, Jesus Christ, he's been told to loot. <laughs> uh, I'll go um, into the bedroom then, where she ran off. Okay, um, are you you're looting the bedroom? He's investigating and stuff that went on in there. And like, you know, he's looking <laughs> okay, around. If he finds anything valuable, all obviously the dead pocket bodies. it. Make an investigation check. Shout! Don't pull off any sconces. Sixteen. 16. Well, immediately obvious is that uh, a lot of the furniture has been changed and moved. The, uh, the, the, those two, uh, the chaise and the desk have sort of been moved to form a bottleneck for defensive purposes. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, birdcage is in the middle of the room. It's on a tall stand. It's in the middle of the room. Looks like various things have been tried to move towards the, uh, towards the door. Um, your investigation you find some things that you think would i mean they're everything in this room even things that are mundane are of the highest quality so you could sell any of these things um you find like little glass vials of perfumed oils and that sort of thing and the perfumed oil is probably worth something but even the glass vial is crystal this this really fancy glass vial would probably be worth money um so you could just start cleaning up um Little tiny knickknacks, pieces of art, some of the furniture. Uh, yeah, he'll just, you know, obviously he's just idling through. And, oh, this would be nice. And so you can put in anything specific up. you're looking for. <clears throat> um, the main thing is, obviously, without metagaming, is he's looking for looking around just to see what could have happened, what could have turned this woman into suddenly able to move and attack and go, you know. Is there, is there, is there anything abnormal? He'll, he'll open the bird cage, see the bird. The bird is still asleep. Is it? Okay. 16, 16. He'll eat the bird. Really? 
Yeah, why not? <laughs> He's worked very hard. He's probably very hungry. Yeah, I might be hungry. Waffle Stupid is not a bird safe channel. <laughs> no, I was going to say. Birds, <laughs> I'm a goblin. Today. All right. I do goblin I things. He's a noblin goblin. I will say this. Before you have the thought to eat the bird, because I am the kind of nice guy that I am, you do realize something is strange about this. Which is why I said cage. it. I was, I, I was hoping the bird was going to turn into something else. <clears throat> the bird cage is abnormally heavy. It looks like it should be made of just light silver embossed uh, metal. But it is very heavy, even for a goblin. Like you, you like start to climb up it to look into thing, and you like expect it to move a little bit as you're climbing, and it it's rock solid. In fact, it looks like it was tried to somebody tried to move it to use it to block the door, and it's left grooves in the wooden floor because it was too heavy for somebody to pick up by themselves. Oh wow! So is there a little catch I can open it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can open it. He wants to open it and get the bird. You are now holding a little parakeet. Oh, this looks is nice. It, is it heavy? Oh, it's all right. It'll be over quickly, and I'm going to eat it. Okay. You eat the bird. That was a <laughs> that was a polymorph demon, everyone. I just killed a demon. <laughs> And he's just gonna. Indeed, so, everyone. Uh, he's gonna carry on checking out this this cage, wondering why it's so heavy. He's gonna you check take it the secret compartment. A bite out of the demon, out of the bird. Yep. Demon in the wing, and there's a, and then, and you are crushed underneath the body of a woman. I told ya. Oh, oh, look what I found. Get it off me. I can't breathe. What? Falcron. What's going on? What's... Where's Ulda? Who are you? You're crushing me. Get off me. I can't breathe. It's a goblin. Guards. Guards. There's a goblin in my chambers. Guards, there's a woman on top of me. Get her. Um, <laughs> the guards are all scattered to hell in breakfast because of the attack. And they you hear begin hearing somebody running in. In comes leading on his sword, gathered stag. Intruder! My lady, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. There's a goblin in here. It's, oh. And she falls to one side. I'm so dizzy. I, what, what is happening? What did you do? I tried to eat the bird, and then it turned into the woman. What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you come in with me. me. I, I'm, I'm so, uh, you, you're, you're my lady. I, I'm so pleased to see you that I, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm you! You're, and he goes to try and grab you, but he's still under the effects of the poison, so you're able to easily dodge it. And so he's just chasing you around the room. While, uh, I'm screaming Shastra. for Falcron. Okay. Yeah. Falcron, as you're out halfway down the stairs, you get yeah. Jacks. <laughs> and so uh, so, uh, so I hear Jacks screaming, mm -hmm. there's there's a woman on top of me, and get up. And so, um, so I do that kind of thing around like four steps down, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> so then I run back up the steps towards Jacks. And so I imagine I'm getting there right as uh, Sir Gatherin Stag is sort of staggering about. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm just like, Jax, what did you do? I uh, tried to eat the bird. And then it turned into a woman. And then she what? Just called the guard on top of me. Well, well are you all right? Oh, I'll be all right. Now she's off me, yeah. And as long as he doesn't, he, well, I don't know if he's going to put me in jail. I'm a hero around these parts. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Who Sir Gatherin was are just... You, and what are you doing in my house? Your... And, and then... I was uh, so I, I, I do recognize her as... Yes. The lady. Yes, all right. 
non-diseased. Yeah. But this is the spitting image of the woman who was on the bed. My Lady Ravenguard, you, you're alive. You're up. You're here. Well, that's that's very good. How did you get here? I'm sorry. I. Who are you? Uh, I'm. Falkrin Boneforge, I am a cleric of the House of Ilmater. Would you uh, perhaps like to have a seat? And I go ahead and like gesture yes. to the bed for her to have a, a, a rest. She puts her head in it. I, I feel so strange. Right. And Sean, as she sits down, if she does sit down, I begin to just check her to make sure that she is all right. Nothing irregular about heartbeat or anything of the sort. Any marks? Yes, or... she seems, well, make a medicine check, but you can see outwardly that she is appears to be perfectly fine. A um, little sweaty. Um, Aren't we all? Shaking a little bit. All right. With a 16, I rolled my medicine check. She seems perfectly fine. Well, my lady, I'm, I'm very glad to report that you are in her, like, outstanding health, and that is a relief to everyone in the house. We... Where is my husband? Where is my daughter? Why are you in my house? I'm sorry, what What do you remember last? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's, what is... is her eyes the fall on the, um, the birdcage. I, I was a bird? You were quite tasty. Yeah. Uh, uh, Falcon, yeah. am I okay to carry on looting? Absolutely not. No, of course not, Jax. You are okay to continue to secure the bodies of the fallen. I'll so do that then. You do that then. The fallen? Your house was oh. under attack. Is uh, everyone all right? Your daughter is fine, and uh, members of your household. And my husband. Your husband is not here. He... It's a good thing you're sitting down. He has been missing for some time. I do you not do you remember? Mean? Oh well, the last thing was it does this have to do with the red web? Yes. Yeah uh, you or or someone who looked like you, uh was it gave the impressions of having the red web, and it was feared that you were uh, taking a turn for the worse from this illness. Well, has it has it has it been contained? The red web. I, it, we. Oh. I was so worried. In in the oh. lower city, has it has it been contained? Yes. Is that where Ular is? No, no. I, I'm. I'm so sorry. Your your husband was sent out of town. He uh, he traveled. Oh. No, that doesn't make any sense. He was he was here this morning. But My lady, I, I fear she you looks at she looks at the uh, Sir Gatherin. Sir... Yes, uh, Sir Gatherin. It, and I look over. Is he still conscious? He's sort of. He's putting on a brave face, but he's like sort of leaning on his sword and, and it's sort of scooping out of it. And he's. Would you he's, like to get me some. Do you want me to get you some more owl? No! No, of course not! I'm not drunk, I'm poisoned! My lady, uh, please, um, let me summon more people for you. God! And he starts banging his sword against the wall on the outside, just. God! Sir, Sir Gatherin Stag, I'm. Sir Gatherin, I, I need you to sit down. You are Make still a persuasion poisoned. check. I mean, how did you get poisoned? Uh, it must have been the ale. There was ale in the in the barracks. I don't usually drink it, but it was good. Um, you are able to successfully persuade, and uh, uh, along with his uh, obvious oh. disorientation, <laughs> Sir Gatherin sits down. We will pause there. And let's see, we have Persephone and Typhon and Rim chasing after Lady Shastra. You are able to overtake Captain Kyberin, 
who is just clumping down the steps and you all sort of come up behind him and you all burst out into the sitting room where the uh, the secret door opens out into. And you see several guards sort of standing there looking confused. Where did she go? She? Well, Lady was, Shastra. There was, a, there was a man who came down here, but no, no woman. Just ran out the door. I'll follow out the door. I don't even stop to listen to them. I follow going. him. Yeah. Captain Kyberian's just this has been a very strange day. Goes and sits down on one of the uh, the settees. So you continue to follow. Very good. Um, Silas, you have managed to recover one hit point thanks to the ministrations of Chazric. Huzzah! What do you do? I'm still somewhat disoriented. Indeed. Um, let me take off my unconscious condition. Uh, how much of this was I gathering? How much of this was I aware of happening? The last thing that you knew was that Chasra ran out of the bedchamber and was apparently making for the secret door. You leapt, you fell, you had your vision, and now you have awoken. Hmm. Who is close to me that I know? Um, Chazric, he is right in your face. Um, Chazric, where, where are my friends? Well, uh, I think <laughs> I hear shouting and uh, had people moving around upstairs. Do you have any he healing abilities, Chazric? Uh, well, no, not uh, other than what I just did. Um, you're very lucky. That fall could have broken something serious, but it seems to have only caused a little bit of a concussion. But uh, you rest easy. I rang the bell. The watch will be here soon. Uh, I need to... I need to find my friends. I need to make sure that they're okay. Um, which way did you see them last? Um, well, they were up top. I think so. You hear the sound of running footsteps running past the great hall. In the, I'm in the downstairs, but the mm -hmm. steps downstairs or the, the stairs running the past the open. So there's a there's a, a, a vestibule yeah. that you when you first came in, and then that leads into the great hall. So running out the vestibule, this would be where you helped uh, uh, Raya Mantlemorn fight off. Okay, so uh, upstairs. Her attackers. Upstairs. You're downstairs. Yeah, I'm downstairs, but I can hear the the noise upstairs. The or running that you just heard is downstairs. I'm going to run towards the running. So you get up and oh no, I, I don't think you're what did to be moving so fast, Sonny? Oh and you manage to sort of stagger and you see uh, a guard just running, running his ass off, just running past you and heading for the front door. I'm going to follow him. All right. Um, you're able to keep pace. Uh, he opens up the front door and disappears outside, and you hear, HALT! Name of the watch! And then, What is the meaning of this? Why are you in my house? Leave at once. Was that the voice talking to the watch? It sounded like those, there was a voice that said halt in the name of the watch yeah. and then another voice closer. Yeah. But it was addressing the first voice. I demand you let me pass. I'm going to walk closer, not run, but walk so I can see if I can tell who's speaking. So you come to the uh, door and you can hear the sound of other people running down the hallway coming close to you. And you look out into the... Uh, yard of this estate. There's a large wall that surrounds it. Uh, there's a barracks over to one side. There's a stable over to the other. And there is a group of at least 10 watch soldiers. Soldiers, These with their visors up wearing uh, white cloaks. And standing in front of them is a dwarf 
looks to be middle-aged, long salt and pepper beard. Um, he's wearing a very fine uh, half plate armor. He's got a uh, hammer on uh, his belt and he's got his hands folded and he's looking up at an impressive looking figure. Dark skin, very, very, very close cropped hair. Um, he's standing there and he's kind of gazing around it. I demand you let me pass, let me through. And he starts to move through and the dwarf says, hold on there a minute. Uldar? Uldar, is that you? How can it be you? Yes, I am Uldar, and you are on my property. Well, we received a bell. So I'm interpreting this correctly, that the apparent dwarf in Heavy Plate is saying that he is Uldar Ravengard. No, the man... The, the man is skin. accusing him of being Uldar Ravengard. The man with the dark skin is claiming to be, is tell, who's telling everybody to let him pass, yeah. has just been recognized by the dwarf as Uldar Ravengard. Are we near this as this is happening? You now come crashing around the corner and you see Silas standing at the door, sort of leaning on the door frame, looking out into the night. And you come up behind him and you see all this and... The Uldar fellow turns around and he says, that's, that's enough. Leave now or I will, I will summon the guard. And he begins to sort of walk purposefully towards the bed and the dwarf is standing there and he says, detain this man. And the watch surround all of them with their weapons drawn. What do you do? I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to gather what's going on. They're they're detaining the figure. Is this that Silas is like, who's confused or Scott who's confused? It's both. Okay. Both. So you have seen the, I, the the context of Uldar Ravengard. That mm -hmm. name. I want to make sure that I'm understanding the context of that name. Yeah, it's a shapeshifter. It was the woman upstairs. Well, I I, yeah. I get that, but I in game I need to. To fully realize that um, in game, Oldar has been missing. He's gone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I conceivably in game could think mm, something's not right here. But you've also just come up from yeah, that's being like, unconscious. Yeah. So, I, I, I think I think being confused is a good state for Silas to be in right now. Then I'll just be confused and let somebody else do something. <laughs> who did the Who did the watch captain say to? arrest or uh he said detain this man and and the uh the watch came around with their weapons drawn against apparently uldar ravengard it's conceivable that some of you would have seen him before tess you have definitely seen him before um am i am i right there at rim and i right there because we've kept running yes you come up to the and you're now standing next to silas okay. looking out you can see what he okay. sees that's oh, that's sorry. what i was waiting for oh. I, was, I was waiting for <laughs> for someone who would actually know in game what's going on typhon we, so we'll, of course we'll, we'll go along. we of course don't know that shastra the right. real shastra is back there you don't yeah. right though there's some i mean she double well hmm Right. I mean, we know something's weird, but we don't know it's shape shifting. Yeah, we we have yet to unmask old man Jenkins yet. Indeed. So, Peter, uh, uh, Typhon, what do you want to do? I'm just going to be um, have my hawk land on top, of, or have owl land on top of the estate, and I'm just going to be watching um, quietly, as this seems strange to me that the very moment that her, that the woman went crazy and started bludgeoning people and ran off and disappeared suddenly Uldar Raven. It just, it doesn't make any sort of sense. I'm Got it. just taking it in, trying to not meta, but Typhon is a very smart yes, character where he would just be like... Well, there's meta and there's meta. Let's, let's just go yeah. through down the line and see what everybody's doing and then we'll move to the next okay. section. So, Persephone, what would you like to do? Um, I call out and say, Uncle? He whirls around. Ah, niece, 
Um, I, how, uh, you should go up and take care of Ostrenis. I'm sure that she is, uh, well, it's good to see you. Where have uh, you been? Well, I've just recently returned from a uh, harrowing, harrowing uh, escape of, from El Torel. It was uh, very, very dangerous. He starts looking at you. Yes, El Torel fell, but I was lucky enough to be outside the gates. And I've been hunted, and I must, must have been in the woods and in the wilderness for days. But I'm here now, and I'd very much like to know what's going on. Can we do like Can 15 insight, insight, insight yeah. checks on this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Make an insight check at disadvantage. Make Even me who role. knows him as a, as like. Yes. Okay. Um, insight, insight, insight. Let me know when you're done with your checks. I'm going to do something. Not so it's that. double threes for Typhon. Oh boy. We have a 16 for Persephone. And a four. And does a four. The up? four um, does not does not succeed. Rim is going to say, uh, he's going to look at Persephone and say, Harriet, will you join me for a moment? What do you say? Enough, I say, Harriet, mm -hmm. will you join me for a moment? And I, I, I say, absolutely. And I walk over. And uh, I just, I, just busy myself in what looks like silent conversation, but I'm going okay. to, um, w with her, but I'm just going to You're using watch. that old actor trick of mumble, 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 yes, mumble. Yes, yes, watermelon, yeah. cantaloupe. Watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> watermelon, watermelon. Watermelon, cantaloupe. Watermelon, cantaloupe. <laughs> As they do that, too, I want to... I haven't really wow, stepped wow, wow. forward to announce myself yet. I will try and... I will take a, um, a piece of wire and kind of ring it around in my fingers and point in Persephone's direction and just say, um, ask him something that only he would really know the answer to. I've been waiting for that. And the only thing that's in my head is the moment from Elf where he's like, what song did you sing to me on my birthday? <laughs> ask, ask, him, <laughs> ask, him if he was, ask him if he was proud of your theater in the lower city. Now, that's, oh, that's... Oh, that's very public, I feel like. But oh, that's that we're true. Having this discussion. Um, we can run with private, the Harriet thing. A private he moment. Uh, the, um, that you shared. The Sean. Dwarf, okay, go ahead. The, the dwarf is looking at it and he says, All right. We received an emergency bell from this establishment. And I happen to know the... Raven Guards very well. They've been friends of mine for years. And I was on my way to the High Hall for the vote this morning. But things seem to have happened here that are uh, requiring explanation. If you are, in fact, Uldar Raven Guard, then I suppose there's no need for a vote. But there was a bell. So who are you, Lot? I step forward. Um, I am Silas Khan, a paladin of Vandria. There was a battle here just uh, just a moment ago. I, I think it was just a moment ago, right? And I look back towards the group. Like, I'm... Yeah, did you go, you go. <laughs> There's, and the house was attacked. Yes, that's why we got the bell. Is then everyone come all in. right? Thank you. And they begin to file in 10 watch guards and this dwarf. And they sort of gather all of you up with them. And a bunch of the guards, there's guards sort of milling around. They've come from different places. One or two you see in the yard who are sort of retching, uh, staggering about the same way as Sir Gathered Stag. And eventually, all of you are found in the Great Hall except for Falkron and Jax. And the watch all have their weapons drawn and they're basically keeping an eye on everybody. Uldar is standing there looking very proud and regal. 
Is Australis with us? She's not. She's still Nor hiding. Nor is the um, the woman from Elturel, correct? Is also uh, Rhea. Rhea. Uh, Rhea. 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 Yes, that's a good question. Uh, Rhea is with you all. She's sort of uh, off to the side, kind of. She's been wounded a bit, but she's got a bandage on her wound, and she's looking around, you know, trying to keep a low profile. She's wanted in the city, but mm. uh, and then, she is interested in what's happening. And then, Sean, what about the the two members of the City Watch that did manage to survive, or at least... There was only one member of the City Watch. Captain Kyberian comes in and say... Oh, okay. Uh, says, ah, uh, uh, High Constable! Uh... Hello, Captain. Why are you here? Um, I... There was, there was a, there was a report that there were people here that were being, that were wanted for the, wanted for the Eltan situation. Ah, yes. Sure. And, but then, oh, I was, I think I was charmed. And they have begin to have a conversation regarding that. Back up to Falkron, Shastra, and Jax. I'd quickly right. probably sneak off to go and get the daughter and bring her back. Yeah. I, I, I tell Jax, uh, yeah, I say, in, in the interim, I have told Jax to try to find the others, and see if they could. <laughs> Catherine tries to stop you, but he is in no condition. So you're able to quickly nimble out of his grasp. You head back to Astralis' room, and you find her still cowering. She's moved out of the wreckage a little bit. She's in the corner, just sort of like... <sighs> I found your mum. I tried to bite her head off. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's all right now. Come on. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen me, isn't she? Uh, it's been a it's been a rough night for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you 14. just said I tried to bite her off. She. Where's Sir Catherine? Oh, he's in there as well. She comes to the door. Sir Catherine? And your Strellis. So your mother. I told you. And she comes running around. She comes with Jax. And she looks wide eyed when she sees her mother. Just, what did you do? She looks at you, Falcon. Your mother was apparently polymorphed into a bird and has been in this cage for some time. I so saved it's her. Impossible. I'm You've the hero. You've been bird for months. Uh, yes, yes. Um, All you but... needed was a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so Australis to... looks very confused. Shasta looks very confused. Goblins Jack's love in birds. Due to Jack's quick thinking, uh, he has found your mother. So. Thank you, Jax. Wait, Jax found Jax. my mother? Mm-hmm. Jax, could you uh, find the others? See if you could locate the group. Um, oh, I'm sure that won't go badly. They're the, with the watch. Well, couldn't be any worse than your current contributions to the conversation. I'll go get arrested. <laughs> I'll be back. That sounds that. great. No, okay, great. <laughs> Keep your hood up. <sighs> so Jax goes off to be arrested. Um <sighs> Strellis is she's holding on to the hands of her mother and just just beginning to ask question after question after question. She's um, she's shaking. She's wide eyed. She starts to talk about the uh, the upcoming vote and that the fact that her father has been missing and and Shastra is just completely Strellis. What what? Your your mother has been through a lot. Just maybe. Step it back a little bit. <laughs> um, yes. Ease her into things. Yes. Well, she's uh, Lady Chaucer, um, as I'm sure your daughter can inform you. I, your husband has been missing. He is, was sent on a mission to El Terrell. You appear to have been polymorphed into a bird for some time now. Uh, um, morphed into a bird. Do you remember when you first received the bird? Oh, it was... Uh, it was months ago. It was who brought the bird into the house? It was it was a gift. Um, from it was a gift from. It was a gift from the Van Thampers. Oh, 
Oh, seven hells. <sighs> All right. Well, it appears the Van Tempers are not quite done messing around in Baldur's Gate. Uh, what? Oh, okay, so we at least have a lead now. That's good. And another good news, your mother seems to be in, in good health. So that is something to be thankful for. Joshua, so Joshua, Joshua has her hands. I don't feel like I'm in good health. I, I understand, my lady. The, the effects of a polymorph spell are not kind, especially given how long you've been under. Um, let me see if there's anything I can do to help that. Um, Sean, I'd like to make some, any sort of like medicine check, or is there like a way in which I can... There are several spells you could use. I mean... Yeah. She seems to be, at the very least, exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Um, medically, she's fine. All Nothing right. that a good night's sleep wouldn't take care of. But right. she's she is fighting off shock mm -hmm. somehow. She's mm -hmm. freaking out. <laughs> Australis is freaking out. Lady <laughs> Shastra is slowly coming to herself, but she's not all there yet. Australis. Would it be possible to brew some tea? Yes, yes. Um, Lovely. Could could you? I've, I've never brewed tea, but I I, I can try <laughs> to find some tea. Yes. Um. Okay. For real. You. I will stay here with your mother. I will okay. not take my eyes off of her. Quick as you can. Where's no, the elf? You. Is there an elf? Thank you. There? No, thank you. Yes, the elf. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've lost Dad track of all my NPCs. Where the hell is the rest of the staff? The is elf, the elf Thad, is not a Thad fast reader. Thadrier went off to, um, Thadrier went somewhere else. You don't know where Thadrier went. <laughs> he seemed to be right behind you, but now he's not. He's moving Sawed furniture off. in another room now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this doesn't go here. <laughs> Barricading all these other rooms. Just right. oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, back downstairs. Uh, Sean, I would like to see if I can tell if uh, Lord Ravenguard is wearing the no disease locket that we put on who we thought was Shastra. Um, he is. He's I thought that I, Falcon, did you take that back? I did. Yes, did sir. you? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my periap, yeah, I got it. Oh. Yeah, right. when, when, I, when I discovered that it didn't actually do anything for her, I was like, well, that's not good. Damn. Okay, I take it back. Okay. That's smart, though. Uh, Uncle, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Yes? Uh, my friend here, Rim. Pleasure to meet you. Harriet has been a wonderful companion the last few days for all of us. Well, first of all, she can't be that much of a companion. Her name is Persephone. I think I would know my own niece's name. And then I, I lean in and say, just so that he can hear, you'll forgive me, but we are in strange times. Could you of tell course. me what you said to me when we made our agreement? He looks at you, penetrating gaze, and then says verbatim exactly what you would expect him to say if he was Uldar Ravengard. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Great. That's just it, awesome. it all makes sense now. It was him. He was impersonating her, <laughs> and he put her as the bird. The masterstroke. No. But they don't know that we know they know we know. Mm -mm. <laughs> we don't know what we don't know. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm Oswald Havanak. The dwarf speaks up. I come up with a different voice for him. It sounds too much like uh, Uldar. For those of you who don't know, I am Oswald Havernack, and I am the Grand Constable of the Watch, and a new member of the Council of Four. Although I suppose that title will be revoked now that Grand Duke seems to be found. I see some bodies here. 
and I see some people with wounds. Shall we look around to see if there are any more problems or is things are things under control? Charles Rick sits up. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm actually going to step to the person that appears to be proper and I'm just going to ask him when did you get back? Five minutes ago you weren't here. You were missing. Well, there was I, a battle. Yes, and I was I was being protected. I was I had just arrived just in time when the battle was happening and I came in but then were you being protected by Thadrier? Yes. No, no, I was being protected by the tiefling. I guess I'm just going to Gosh, um first I'm going to try to use my divine sense. You reach for the light of Andrea. And it's not there. But something else is. Power. You could make this person talk. You could find out the truth. It's there for you. What type of power? Is it the power? It's of not Vandria? Vandria's power. Definitely not. Doesn't feel the same. Feels sweeter, softer. That's not the type of thing that uh, followers of Vandria are into, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, man, I really want to just attack this guy. Probably um, not a good idea, with, but you're welcome to do what you point. want. Uh, I looked. I looked back towards Persephone, and just look for some sign. Like he said that he was being protected by Thadra, but he's not the Tiefling. I don't remember a Tiefling. We literally Pil were just attacked by imps. Pil Pilgrim Lowlighter was a Tiefling. Oh, okay, she died. Right, she died in the hallway. He doesn't know that though. Neither do you. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm looking towards Persephone, Persephone for some sign, like like. Like, he was being protected in what? One of the secret rooms that we just went through every single room of this entire freaking house? Wait, in terms of who knows who that Pilgrim is dead, both Silas, Silas and Persephone do. Persephone, Persephone know that. would know, yeah. yeah. At, at that him. moment, Jax arrives. <laughs> Jax, bite his head. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jax, eat him. <laughs> oh, good, clarity. <laughs> <laughs> he just walk, he walks into the room like, and he just looks at everyone and was like, oh, shit. The watch just all turn with one gaze and look as the <laughs> goblin walks into the room and there's just, <laughs> I I yell out at them that he's not the enemy. He was just protecting this house. All right. If anyone here is suspect, it is this man. <gasps> oh! All right. Everybody, make a perception check, please. Everybody in this room, make a perception check, because I'm going to say that Jack's entering the room and everybody drawing their weapons was enough for everybody to take their eyes off of Uldar Ravengard. I rolled a five. Oh, so five. Oh. S rolled a ten. Oh, and then a little uh, well. I got a, a 13. Well, has anyone got inspiration left? I do. Oh my gosh. So wait. What do I do with it? You could give it to someone. You could or if you, you give if you give it to me, it would be a 26. I give it your it's yours. It's so yours. <laughs> that's cheating. Okay. All right. <laughs> Knowing what the role is, that's cheating. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, it's all right. I I will allow it to the um the the um the digital frame in which we are uh, forced to work in creates some interesting situations. But yes, so 26. 
<laughs> you see He's everybody go <laughs> You see everybody look at you. You see the dwarf who is uh, standing there looking. He looks. He opens his mouth like he's about to say, "Seize him." And you look and you see the form of this dark-skinned man, short hair, uh, wearing the clothes of a noble, um, start to ripple and grow shorter. And it looks like he is trying to take the form of something else. Oh, he's a thingy-bajig. And He's I'm gonna in shoot the him. process. You're gonna shoot him. All right. It's a finger me, Jason. <laughs> I'm literally not a, a, a paladin just vouched for it. Yeah, but if what? you turn around now, when well, I'll everybody shot turns him. around, and then the watcher drawing, and, and he pulls up his crossbow and shoots. Make your attack. It's a finger me, Uh, uh, uh Hold your clarity. Uh, uh, well, would I have advantage if it was a surprise attack? <laughs> You would have advantage if it was an advantage. You would have advantage if it was a surprise attack. And 22. That's the 22. And 15 damage. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't think he was surprised, though. I need to check something, if you don't mind. All right, so... You didn't say stealth. No. It's a surprise attack However, get advantage, he... don't they? What? Surprise I mean, that's, that's, that's a sneak attack. That's, well, I mean, that's, that's a sneak attack, right? It's... Yeah. Right? right. I mean, I'll, allow it. I'll allow it. Fine. <laughs> yes. coming, did he? He was being blocked by all of the... You're a little... He was being blocked by all He's the He's probably over. looking directly at me because I just pointed right at him and yeah, said that he was sucking. So I looked at him, yeah. You look at him and this bolt comes... You Ah! And you all turn back to look, and you see, in the process of changing, this creature that is clearly not Uldar Ravengard. I attack him. Jax is such a fucking hero. You must all admit this by now. Come on. <laughs> oh, I've hands. been on Team Jax since, like, <laughs> moment <won>. one. <laughs> hands down. Favorite member of the party. Let me see here. <laughs> Meanwhile, upstairs, we're just... <laughs> drinking tea. Chamomile? <laughs> <laughs> I love drinking it. tea! <laughs> Australis has gone to try and find tea. She, it, she, it could be all day. Um, she's like, what? Where do we keep the water? Um, <laughs> I'm totally attacking the thing. All right. Roll attack. I like it without initiative. Awesome. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Jax, you are tackled. And tumbled to the ground. Add Silas a weapon e. with a roll of eight. Mm. I'm not going to make it. You can. You are being dogpiled by the watch. Um, however, the rest of you all saw this bolt, and you saw it hit Uldar Ravenard. You saw green blood. The watch not see it either. They're attacking you. Oh, oh shit! Rim um, runs. Sil Silas, you are not restrained. It is uh, it is Jax who's restrained. Uh. Rim is going to run to the pile of watch people that are uh, attacking Jax and going to literally like move their body to look at at what uh, move, take one at a time and, and turn them to uh, Mr. Greenblood. All right, make a would that be athletic? make an attack roll? Attack roll. Yeah. Uh, was that unarmed? Yep. All righty. Uh, that would be a tw a dirty twenty. Nice. Dirty twenty. Uh, well, you are able to easily overcome their inertia with your strength and size. There, there's one guy who's practically in mid leap to jump on the dog pile, and you grab him and turn him to face the creature. All right, that is Rim uh, Persephone. Uh, how close am I? You're right there. Uh, and it clearly does not look like my uncle anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. It's... You 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 look back in time to see like eyes rearranging and the mouth like changing from the strong jaw into something with a beard and a little shorter. It, like even even the clothes he is wearing were starting to like expand and turn into uh, look like look kind of like maybe armor that the watch would wear. 
Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Oop, that's my dagger. Uh, gonna go with my rapier. Um, I know we're not an in initiative, so can I do rapier and dagger, or just one thing for now? You just just flat out attacking. Okay. Uh, let's just say one thing for right now. Uh, then it, ignore the dagger. That was a miss. All right. So rapier. Okay. Well, 24. 24 to hit and nine damage. Okay. And Typhon. Um, he's looking for the T too. Hmm. I would like to, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully stopping this in its tracks. Um, I will. Um, yes, I will. Um, uh. Throw the boiling tea at him. And uh, uh, ex- uh, le- let a little bit of laughter through my teeth in which a bit of green mist hisses. And I will reach out and I say, um, funny timing, isn't it? And cast hideous laughter upon oh, him. Oh, very nice. So that is a will save, I believe? It is a wisdom save. Wisdom save. They will always be will saves for me. Yep, yep they will, yep. Wisdom saves. They were wisdom before they were will, Sean. Come on. What is the roll to beat? Uh, it is a 14. Well, I have a 15. Okay. So. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stop. Um. Stop. And the slowly morphing figures changes from Uldar, changes from whatever it was morphing into, and goes to this strange gray humanoid looking form three fingers on each hand no clothing wide bulbous eyes a nose just two slits and no mouth and then there's a that appears I surrender yes me too <laughs> So there are several watch who are piled on the goblin and I stop and say, you see, he pointing at Jax is defending this house and this thing is not. Get off Uh, of him. And I walk over and say, I'm I'm a relative of the house of Ravenguard. Release him immediately in my most actor voice. Make a persuasion check. I've got, I've got, uh, is anybody uh, watching the doppelganger where everybody's yeah, I mean, watching? I just, I just pointed at it. At oh, no. I was, yeah. If I had movement, I was going to try and close the distance more. Yeah, sorry. So he's surrounded. He's, but I was, I was eye. shooting for a bit of intimidation, hopefully. All right. So we have persuasion and we have intimidation. I'm, a I'm trying to mm-hmm. bite their ankles or whatever. I uh, I'll tell you what, um, I will give, um, your, if you roll a successful um, intimidation check, uh, Silas, then I will give um, Persephone advantage on her persuasion. 14. 14. 14 is enough. So Persephone gets to roll again for persuasion. And not performance, right? I'm not performance, like... persuasion. Okay. 15. Hey, there you go. There's a teamwork. Sort of look at and you hear like, ow, a fucking thing bit me. And but then uh the grand cost constable comes over and says, Alright, alright, alright. <sighs> right, you two. And he points to uh two of his guardians and says, begin to search the house. Any bodies you find, bring them down here. You two. He points to another two. Stand guard at the door. No one comes in, no one goes out. I think there's a library here of some sort. Why do we all yeah. move there? It's largely burned. This might be a safer, cleaner space. Dead bodies right. everywhere. Let's go. Um, okay, we'll stay right here then. And he begins to slowly get all of your names. The dwarf's name is Grand Constable Osmul Havernak. Um, he, for those of you, a test would, uh, Persephone would know this from conversations with Astralis. He is, was just yesterday appointed the new fourth member of the Council of Four. 
So now there is a complete uh, council of four. And this morning, at this very moment, in fact, he was supposed to be at the High Hall voting for uh, whether or not they were going to replace a Grand Duke. But he's not there, which means the vote is probably not happening. Were the Van Thompers the ones who appointed him the fourth? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, they couldn't have done it just on their own. Okay. They, they, he was the logical choice. He is okay. the head of the watch. He's very well liked. Got it. But Sean, he was meant to replace the Raven Guards. Yes. He, they're right. They're Uldar going Raven to Guard. vote on. Yes. There's the Grand Duke sits above all. Yeah. Right. And that's Grand Duke Uldar. Right. And they were all going to vote. Let's just do away with this and find someone new. The, the Grand Duke has been missing for weeks. And Persephone was going to go and convince them, no, don't vote right now. Put it off. Because we'll Shastra was the proxy to the Grand Duke. And if she showed up, she could speak with his voice um, right. in the vote. So, so, right. so, so happy it, everyone's been paying attention. It's such a complicated plot. I told you. Oh, it I'm, is. I'm confused but, in game. Okay. Um, <laughs> but also, I I was just, I got, I'm just asking, who did, so who did Haven, uh, who did Haven replace? Haven, like, he replaced, so. Raven Guard. So there's a council of four. Yeah. The Grand Duke's vote counts twice. Oh, so, so he's able to override. But the Grand Duke is one of the four. Oh, one of the four. Okay. So before they could choose a new Grand Duke, they had to have a new fourth. Gotcha. Now they have a new fourth, but they have yet to choose the Grand Duke. Got it. So back up to Falkron. Um, you've been by yourself with Gatherin and Chasra for a while. She seems to have recovered. Australis is nowhere to be found. She's, she's, gotten lost somewhere yeah. just go, like grinding keep, keep leaves looking over at tree in the yard. Being like <laughs> i'm sure she's but, fine and, and a great deal of the servants sadly are also dead so yeah there's, there's no. that yeah but the house isn't burned down so that's nice yet it could still be burning <laughs> no we, we put out most of the fires i think with flour and other things. So. Chasra said it there. She says, "Sand, oh, right. sand." Falcon. Yes, my lady. I think I understand. My husband is missing. Yes, has been for some time. Yes, and during that time, I was a bird. Based yes. on my memories, that does make sense. But this attack is, is everyone all right? I should, I should see to my people. It just stands up. uh, Oh, 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 my my lady, my lady, my lady. I would, I would have you, you are near the point of unconsciousness due to your exhaustion. I, I need you to kindly please sit down and- I appreciate your concern. But, as the head of the household in my husband's absence, it is my duty to see that things are as they should be. And I will see the damage of this attack, and I will thank those who have defended this house. Then will you allow me to assist you? Thank you. She puts her hand on your shoulder, so Catherine comes and says, These people that are with this dwarf, they are valiant indeed. They did defend this house. And I am ashamed to say that I did not understand the... I've stood next to that damn cage for months. Never thought to look at it. Never thought to eat it. And he begins to slowly kind of stand. He's walking behind you all as you begin to walk downstairs. And in the midst of this conversation that you all are having downstairs with Osmal Havernak and the surrendered gray creature, and now Jax has been... The, the guard has their hands on you, Jax. You could probably hear Get off my <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get hit if you do it again. 
Okay. Uh, Shastra comes in, as does Falkran and Sir Gatherin, and now you are all together. The gang's all here, yay. Shastra what about what about, what about creepy, faceless, wax face creature thing, dude? He still has his hands up. I love it when you talk technical. Yeah. I don't know what it really is. Shastra comes in, and Osbul bows. My lady, Shastra. I heard that you were not feeling well. It's good to see you up and about. Hello, Osbul. Well, what is the meaning of this? And you all inform her. And the watch begins to go through the house, collect the bodies. Uh, Sir uh, Pilgrim Lowlighter, the uh, tiefling, is dead. Um, as are most of the servants. It looks like the fellow you fought at the very end first went through the servants' quarters and carved them all up before going towards Lady Shastra's uh, bedchamber. You all explain very where you've been and the various parts that you played during the battle. During this time, Australis comes in with a pot of tea. She's got like this humongous blanket that looks like it's been cut. Um, so she looks like she cut out a piece of a humongous blanket and she's using it to hold the pot because she couldn't find a cozy, she couldn't find a, a, a something to hold it. But she's made tea. Well done, Australia. And she's there just holding the tea, just sort of looking around, watching everybody as Shastra has clearly taken control of the situation and explanations are made. And then through, through the, during the course of the conversation, um, uh, Grand Constable Oswald snaps his fingers and a couple of, of the watch go and grab the, uh, the, the creature and are holding him. And now... Everyone knows everything they need to know. And we can resume the role play at that point. Do they unhand me then? They do, eventually. Uh, is, well, anybody, is anybody questioning the creature? Nobody has said anything. Oh, oh, I'd like to. Perhaps we should all retire to the sitting room, says Shastra. As we move, as we start to move to the sitting room, I lean over to Jax and go, nice shot. Oh, thank you. So now you have uh, Grand Constable Osmo, Shastra, Ostrelis. Uh, Thedrier does turn up. He was uh, seeing to some wounds that some of the guards had um, that, and, and he continues, he, he sort of, you pass him and he sort of looks strangely at the gray creature, but he says, I'm, I, I'm, there's much work to be done. And he is, just sort of puttering around the house, healing the various people that he can find to heal. So it is the party, Shastra, Ostrelis, Sir Osmo, and the creature in the sitting room. When we're standing walking, in the middle of all of you. At, you know, on our way or whatever, I would like to just whisper to probably Silas and try and get, say, to Persephone as well, but simply, um, there are political machinations happening behind this. We should not allow this creature to leave here in the hands of the Watch. Trustworthy as they might be, this new one is in the palm of Van Tempur, it seems. What do you suggest, Typhon? Should we kill it? No, but do not let it escape our grasp and that of the lady here until we know all. John, they have been informed that the bird that Lady Australis, or not Australis, uh, Lady uh, Shastra, uh, Shastra uh, like was gifted as was from the Van Tampers as well. So yes. Okay. This is an interesting thing too, because did does that mean that detect magic did not detect whatever was affecting it her? Did not, but it did not. Because you were the able cage to determine is lead. because the cage is made of lead. That's why it was heavy. But there were. Just, there were like bars. there was enough there was enough lead to obfuscate the spell. 
and me talking to the bird uh, didn't result in me sleep. Me sleep. Me me. So bars of lead would disrupt the spell, is what you're saying? There was enough. There was enough lead there to disrupt the spell. Okay. That's I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. Work. I'm going to close my eyes for a moment, and I'm going to try to reach out to that voice earlier. Okay. It connects. It connects. You are reaching for the power that Glazia has offered you? Not reaching for the power. <laughs> Not reaching for the power. I'm reaching out to Alila's voice to see if she's there. Uh, there is something for you to reach for, but it's not a pick and choose. No, no, no is... okay. That's I'm I'm reaching for a communication, not not a power. There is no communication. To which I could hopefully deduce that at least I'm not being shadowed or watched constantly, or that she is involved in this and so intrigued that she's keeping an eye on it. Because if I reached out to talk to her and they were behind it, somehow involved. Because I don't know things. Okay. So, what next, DM? Um, there is someone to question. You say it's tradition. Us goblins eat the head off first, and then we drink all the juice out. Jax, Jax, Jax. So mm-hmm. is is the watch allowing us to question the creature? The watch, the the, the, uh, and the, the household grand servants are like, so we... gra- the grand con- the the high constable is there, but he's just as interested in hearing what this creature has to say as the rest of you. So and... it is, it is just us, and then the the mm-hmm. two of the Raven Guard household, and then the high constable, and that's yes. it. That's all. So mm-hmm. okay. And Typhon, if you need more, the Nistel's magical aura was also cast on the inside of the um, of the uh, N Y S T U L mm-hmm, mm. on the inside of the uh, uh, bird cage. I'm gonna take out Oranian and just put it against the thing's face. <sighs> we do not wish to fight anymore. We have surrendered. I have a great need to kill something lately, creature. Which is why it would be very wise for you to answer our questions. Very wise, yes. Who, who sent you? Ah, that is valuable information. I press the blade into its face. Ah. <laughs> as valuable as your life? Dampua family, they said to me. Was it Mortlock? No. It was Amric. Amric Van Dampua hired me, hired us. We were to be Shastra Ravengard, help convince her husband to go to Elderel. He did not want to go, but... We convinced him. Why Elturel? That I do not know. Said we. Are there more of you? Always more. But in this house, only me. Where the, the plurality. Uh, can I do a check to see if I believe that the name given is, you know, so far do I believe this creature? Inside check. Seven, I believe it. He seems to be <laughs> telling the truth. Very difficult to read with this particular set, um, set of um, features. Yeah. What did Van Thampor House hope to gain? And I'm going to glance over at the newly made to the Council of Four fellow over there. But I'm asking the creature, but like, what did they hope to gain? Mm-hmm. They wanted. Ulda to go to Elturel, of course. Who and better why? to convince him than his wife? Why did they want him to go to Elturel? 
you don't know. If you don't know, then I guess I'm done with you. And I start, I pull back a Ronnie and I'm going to just take his head off. No, 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 no. And, and just uh, uh, metagaming, it is not a bluff or a deception. I'm ready to take his head off. Okay. He is cowering, unarmed, and surrendered. Not really caring about that right now. Rim will uh, step forward and attempt to stay your blade. I look and I say, if he doesn't know anything, maybe, maybe a different approach is needed, Rim. Maybe someone with a different set of skills. I'm afraid, Silas, my abilities are quite spent for the day. Except perhaps for one. Don't know anything about why. But that does not mean I don't know anything. Other information. It seems our friend here is only interested in keeping you alive as long as you're providing more information. Mm. Give us some time to change his mind, and in the meantime, I suggest you make your time worth it to him. Go on. He's a big dragonborn, but he can only hold that weapon back so long. You know, well, uh, very, very strange things happening at Van Thambur home. Strange creatures flitting, flying about, strange things underneath the manor, strange things in the boys' room, Thirstwell. Very strange. He has, he has box, a strange box, puzzles. He works on the puzzles. He, he speaks to us sometimes while we lie on the bed and we speak to him, give him information. We could not help with the box, but he has the box. I'm going Maybe to look useful? at- I'm going to look at Persephone and say, Persephone, this creature answered your questions flawlessly. And now he's speaking of places in this house, secrets. It's probably advisable that this creature should never leave this house again. I have no love for a creature who would so defile my family. That is interesting, though. How did you know what Persephone here was speaking of? <laughs> Tricks we have, yes. Very easy to, and he begins to change form again and becomes Captain Havernack. Very easy to look like someone else. Any fool with a bit of magic power can do it, but to really be someone else, then you have to be able to answer any question. And the only way to do that is to know what the answer is. He can read minds. Hmm. Very clever. And then he goes back to being himself. Okay, can you be a bird? No. no. Too small. But many other things, many people, many types of people, people with, and he changes into Shastra, terrible diseases and you pulls up his hand and you see boils appear on his hand and then disappear and then the red web appears on his face goes down his neck and then disappears how is Shasta reacting to all of this is she's standing to... stone faced yeah. just looking at all this and I say Rim if anything I've done now has earned your trust I ask you to trust me now I do let the blade go do it Silas do it now, what? 
What? No. <laughs> no. No, I, I've cooperated. I've surrendered. Shastra says, I am the head of this household. Trespassers in this household fall under my purview. I look at her and say, do you wish him dead? Now. I do. I go for the blow. You kill him. Bye. Well, that was rather final, but... We should probably go to the basement, and we should probably investigate the things that he did say. All right, he was talking about the Van Dampur Villa, not this one. Yep, I just said the basement, but... Um, look at all that green blood. I, I was going to... Yeah, I'd like to Go ahead. examine the <laughs> Typhon creature. <laughs> yes, well, he, he now that he's dead, he appears to be in this he's just a green, basically alien-looking bug-eyed guy on the ground, you know, and but green blood. It may also be a good idea to catch up the Lady Shastra on what the council is attempting to do at this very moment. And I look again at the guy. Well. Uh, <laughs> There won't be any of that happening while I'm not there. Um, Lady Shastra, I, uh... This is, uh, above my pay grade. I, uh, I'm a good high constable. Mm. And what I, I just heard is that a retainer of the House Van Thampur attempted to misdirect the leader of this entire land, Baldur's Gate, and then attempted to infiltrate another noble house and has attempted to sway the vote of the council. But that all very well made a me retainer. True, but I a can't retainer. just walk up to the Van Tamper Villa with a watch and arrest her. Even with this evidence, it will take time. Can you help us figure out a way to get in? Maybe unseen? Well, that would have probably been a useful thing. And he points at the doppelganger. We're forgetting one very important bargaining chip. Her son. Want we to meet her son and use him as leverage. What was his name? Renick? Ren? Amrick, I believe. Oswald is looking, just looking at you all. Just, I mean, obviously, Van Dampur has set all this in motion, but, well, you've killed, you've killed the witness. Yeah. Yeah, just to be clear, so we're trying to move on from murder to blackmail, possibly kidnapping? Is that, is that how we're set up uh, today? I'm not hearing this. Do you have a better idea, Falcron? Just killed the only witness. We, we have no evidence now. I mean, uh, other than our testimony, which is... Do we think that evidence was going to stop these people? Uh, they don't seem to play by the rules, so it seems that perhaps we maybe should play by their rules. This is what I can promise you. If this comes to light in any sort of official capacity, it will all come to naught. Even with Lady Shastra's testimony, even with Australis, with all of you, there's not enough evidence to convict her with the power that she has. So... If there is another way to deal with this, then I can promise you that the watch won't answer any summons that come from that house as quickly as we did this one. It seems 
the answer to this problem is one that's more surgical, yes. We're going into the sewers again, aren't we? Oh, I like the sewers, it's like a holiday. He starts <laughs> he starts scanning you all and his eyes fall on Rim. You know, there's a report on my desk. Been there for quite some time. Ever heard the name Eltan before? Okay. Benz Eltan was the name of the boy who had Red Web. Oh, jeez. Yes. Oh. I'm going to forget that you said that. You seem like a decent fellow. Uh, Perhaps you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was a Yaragold who escaped with this boy. We found her and found out that she had been staying at the place called the Blushing Mermaid. And there was a big dragonborn there at the same time. Everyone remembers seeing him. Silver. Huge. But I suppose there could be more than one in Baldur's Gate. Don't you think? Rim sits quietly for a moment. So, all of you, you're capable. And you have my thanks for protecting the citizens of the city. And I will do what I can to help you with whatever you decide to do. And although I've got power, it only extends so far. Lady Shastra, with your permission, my men and I will remove your dead and then depart. However, if you need anything, let me know. And Osmul Havanagh leaves. You are there with Shastra and Ostrelis. So Shastra we need to, to discuss our fee, because our heroes cheap. Work doesn't come cheap, does it? Yes, Goblin, Shastra says. I'm still not sure I have all of the pieces. But it is clear that you all have done my family great service. Ask anything of me, and it is yours if I have the power to grant it. There is still more to do. I wish to also tend to the dead, so I'll be outside if you need me. All right, Falcon leaves. What could I ask for? Wait, Jax. Um, <laughs> Aunt, do you, do you have any connection that could get us into the Van Thampore mansion? <laughs> Anything at all? I have connections that I thought would be useful months ago, but now I'm not sure. If Thalamra is powerful enough to orchestrate something like this, then there's no telling what forces she has at her disposal. I fear for the city. Then let us go to her house now. No, please, you must receive some reward. Well, I would take any sort of healing that you may have. I don't That's feel well. very good. I don't need healing. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, no, I mean, I don't feel good. I do need healing. <laughs> well, we could find a place for you to stay tonight, today, uh, to rest, um, if that is what is needed. Oh, we've got rooms already. So Gatherin steps forward, he says, you may keep the cloak. Thank you. What cloak? Oh, that cloak. The, mine. I, mentioned door. I am... 
ashamed that I was not able to see this. I couldn't conceive. I, my lady, I apologize. Oh, stop being a big baby. You got bested by a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I put a hands on Jackson. Tap on the back of the head. Oh, have you got an idea of reward? What about um, a, a ring of invisibility? Um. Well, we don't have a ring of invisibility, do we? And she looks at, and Australis is just, I, maybe I. Um, they sort of look around. They, they they seem to be two ladies who are used to having people who they can just say something to around them and there's nobody so it might be hard to find if it's invisible <coughs> are they expensive i don't know enormously I would well, maybe if you have some pearls he might consider those instead all, but if if you will accept money of course we have money we could give you i'm i i go over to gathering sir gatherin stag and i look at him and i say a true failure would be to stop serving. And then I walk away. Um, very well. Uh, we will assume that all of you searched the various bodies. Um, you recovered in total 61 gold pieces and 34 silver pieces. The Death's Head of Ball has a black onyx ring shaped like a scorpion. The body of the scorpion is on the most topmost part of the knuckle and the tail curves around the finger and there's a point that sticks out the very bottom of the uh, point of the tail. Um, at some point... Uh, Thedra Green has a quiet moment with, um, sorry, one moment, please. I don't have my dice, so you all have to see this. Rim. Well, that annoys me. Silas. Um, and he sort of says, he goes, these things don't work at all. He takes off his spectacles. They're supposed to make you able to see things that you might otherwise miss, but I didn't notice that the bird was polymorphed for months. I'm not sure that they work very well, but they are definitely magical. Perhaps they will find better use with you. And he hands you his glasses. You are muted, buddy. I take them, and then I say, so these would help with seeing things. Hmm. Especially things that are um, perhaps hidden, um, not easily available in first glance. Oh, I see you recovered Pilgrim Sword. Hmm. Sad. This... Someone had attempted to hide this. Oh. Do you know why? Well, it's it's a powerful weapon. Perhaps she didn't want it falling into the wrong hands. Does she have family here? In Baldur's Gate? No. Well, the... Temple of Torm, but... No family. I believe how its you know name it's, is... How do you uh, know that it's powerful? Well, it's... Easy to, 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 to see for anybody who's got an aptitude for that sort of thing. I... Thank you, Cedria. And I walk over to Typhon. Typhon, these seem to be something that helps with seeing things. Perhaps you or, or Jax could Copy use the them to see things. <laughs> um, do they, just looking through them, do they, is it 
something that I obviously we think they're probably magical. Are they? Well, when you cast when you cast detect magic um, the first time, they did show up as magical. Do they require attunement to work? Um, You would only know that through an identification spell. Okay, so just putting them on, you. Uh, They were they were a gift from Thedrier. They're probably safe. It's a good question. Let me just look that up. And also this sword. Uh, we should probably find out more about this, but I will hold on to it for the moment. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind spending a few hours with these items. They could aid us, but as far as I'm exhausted, that last fight was... So you put them on, Typhon, and... Mm-hmm. Um, it, the the range of your vision, vision doesn't seem to change very much, but then you look at your hand, and as you move it within one foot of your face, you're able to see much more clearly every single line and imperfection on your skin. My, microscopic, my, microscopic imperfections. <laughs> ah, ah. And uh, the, uh, you could see, like, you could almost see the blood pumping underneath the skin. They do not require attunement. Hmm. You were That's saying it. about your sword, Silas? I'm just going to hold on to it for now. Right. Um, but I would at some point like to investigate uh, again if this was owned by a Pilgrim, what uh, if it should be returned. I'm not just going to say, oh, hey, I found a sword off a dead person. I'm going to keep it. More like see if I can find out if there's family, if if she was a retainer of the house, or if it should be passed on in some other way. But for the moment, just going to hang on to it because I'm very tired and I have one hit point. <laughs> All right. So Gatherin sees you with it and says, "I believe she said its name was Corpse Slayer." As he walks by. Um, who has the scorpion ring? Uh, I don't know if anybody took it. Well, I, I don't think you specified who I has it. I didn't say it, just that yeah. you found At it. At whatever um, point we have some time to rest, I'm like I said, I'm quite spent. I will just sit down, hopefully with a glass of wine and class cast to identify a bunch. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, the, uh, the ring is the, uh, the Ring of the Scorpion, and it gives the wearer the ability to cast Cantrip Thorn Whip, except instead of thorns coming out, it is a shadowy sort of uh, cloud of grasping hands, which will grasp on, do piercing damage to whoever it uh, touches, and then can pull that person 10 feet if the person desires. Um, the eyes of minute seeing you have um, and um, Corpse Slayer, plus one, longsword. Okay. Um, and I believe that is everything. Let's see here. Oh, and of course, uh, the Cape of the Montebank. Uh, can you remind me, I, is it one time ever use it or one time a day or? I will post it here. Thank you. Uh, apparently, I do not know how to spell Montebank. I'm Come sure on. you will find it on the palanquin. Yes. <laughs> ah, Montebank. There it is. Thank you. Montebank. Oh. There it is. Um, it is uh, once per day. Excellent. Well, that's awesome. That's pretty it is awesome. Yeah. Abuse it well. I plan to. When we come back, we will have the plan from where you all want to go from here. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun.